Hello everyone. Today's lecture is the construction of major space. I will introduce two lectures, uh, lecture 16 and lecture 17. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I, I introduce the outer measure and mu measurable set. And the next lecture is the understanding Han Karadeo theorism and pre measure space. Okay. Let's start our lecture. Then let's see the following question. Uh, given an arbitrary set X is given, somebody gives you the arbitrary set. This is just a literally literally arbitrary set. This is not real number. This is not a finite. This we can we cannot determine. This is finite or in uh, infinite. Just this arbitrary set. Then. Is it possible to construct the measure space? Measure space we know consists of okay, whole set is already given, we can uh x and sigma algebra m and measurable function or measure shortly measure mu. So just arbitrary set, somebody arbitrary set gives, we just, uh, we, our mission is to complete, construct sigma algebra and um, measurable function. It's so difficult task. However, in between two lectures, like 16 and 17, I introduced the constructing the measure space. Lecture 16, I'll concentrate on the sigma algebra. So given x, arbitrary set x is given, how to construct the sigma algebra. This our topic is outer understanding topic is outer measure and mu measurable set or, or mu measurable. And the next lecture 17, I more focus on the um, mu. So, how to construct the major space? This is related to Han Karadeo theory, Karadeo theory theories, or Han Karadeo theory theories. Okay, let's go ahead. Our assumption, our assumption is arbitrary set X is already given, and our aim in this lecture how to construct to measurable. Uh, how to construct the sigma algebra. Okay, we don't have the sigma algebra structure and given the series of idea, we directly construct the sigma algebra. Okay, and next lecture, I'll construct the measurable function that we can construct completely. We can construct measure space. Uh, but also note that the method, the measurable, how to construct the measurable space is not unique. I, I will, in, uh, my, in this lecture, using the outer measure and mu measurable set, and next, Han Karadeo theorism, I construct the measure space. However, I said this is not, the method is not unique. But I think that this is the most important idea than other method. So I'll introduce the outer measure and mu measurable set and next direction and Karadeo theorism. Let's see the outer measure. Uh, note the remarkable point that uh, we should discriminate the measure space mu measure space mu and between we can understand that the, between the difference measure space mu and the outer measure mu star. Okay, I'll explain the difference difference between two these guys. Okay, a set function mu star, this power set goes extended real value system. This is also real number and contain infinite. It's called outer measure. The first difference between these guys is the domain. Measurable set, in case of the measurable set, we know already know the sigma algebra. So this is the domain is a sigma algebra M, this blue guys, M, and 
the range is a still extended real value system. So this is just there. But in case of the outer measure, we don't have the sigma algebra structure clearly. We our aim is to construct to sigma algebra structure. So clearly this in this arbitrary set we don't have the sigma algebra structure. So just uh, in this case, just we start the power set. This is a bit first um, remarkable difference between the measure of the set and the outer measure. Okay. Then it's called a outer measure. The first condition. Clearly, this is the empty set. This clearly have the. Uh, this is power set. P X means power set. This contains clearly the uh, empty set. So if we consider value of the empty set, empty set, this value is zero. This is first condition of the outer measure. And second condition is the monotonicity. For any subset A, B of X is given, borrowing uh, equality or satisfied. And second condition is countable sub-additivity. This is not countable additivity. This is countable sub-additivity. So for any sequence AI, the subset of X given, this sequence is no problem overlapping or non this disjoint. This is no problem. Just consider any sequence subset of X, then following uh, equality inequality is satisfied. Uh, then we can say this is outer measure. Considering the properties of the measurable function, measurable function is just require empty set. Uh, empty set is also zero. And if the sigma algebra element is comes, this is positive value. But this is also positive value because the domain is given here. Okay, including zero. And second condition is satisfies countable additivity countable additivity condition. Countable additivity condition. This means disjoint set. <coughs> if E i is a disjoint collection of a disjoint set, then mu union of E i is written as sigma mu E i. But this, uh, when comparing this definition of the major measurable function, um, we can the different we can see the difference of the sigma algebra. So note that this is just uh, outer measure is not defined on the power set, just defined on the power set, not sigma algebra, because we don't have the sigma algebra structure, and the condition is uh, different than the Measurable space, measure of measurable function. Let's see an example of the outer measure. Let Px, this is power set, be a collection of set X and define uh, law uh, epsilon to extended real value uh, is a set function. Clearly, these guys is a subset of the power set X. This is better. And define the function mu star. This is power set and goes to extended real function by mu star empty set is zero. And if otherwise, so if a is not empty, define mu star a is zero. This is so complicated definition. Um, then mu is outer measure on x. And in particular, mu star. In uh, if the there is clearly we can construct and define outer measure if the some conditions are satisfied. But however, if we define outer measures in this uh, in this method, then we can say mu star is outer measure in this by function, let's say function law. So let's understand the definition of the mu star a. Uh, this means con uh, let's consider the subset of epsilon e k. This is open. This is cover, which uh, covers the 
set A. So, for example, is it A is the arbitrary set? Ah, the A is the power set of A, but this is not empty set. When we consider the cover, which uh, EI, which covers the A, E2, E3, and so on, uh, this covers this a uh, denumerable or uh, this is countable or finite. So anyway, this guy covers uh, these A's. Dang, dang, dang means counter. Uh, of course, if the cover is not finite, this is no problem because if we if we consider n e one e one da 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 e n covers A, then we just setting e k empty set when k is n plus one. So um. So in this case, this is no problem. So, okay, then, uh, but um, note that this cover E I I for convenience is a uh, blue blue guys the blue cover as the E I, but. This is not unique method how to cover A. For example, we can consider another cover, the how to cover this A. For convenience, I put this guy's uh, purple case as E or uh, I prime I one two infinite. And um, besides, we can consider another method to covering A. This method is uh, very, very uh, many methods to cover this guy's A. Okay? Then note to that, we can give the set function. So, for example, these guys, E1, we can define because E1 member is uh, contained in epsilon, we can define low E1. And similarly, we can define low E2. So each cover, when we define low E uh, n, the arbitrary number, and we can consider the summation of low e i and similarly if this is e1 prime we can define mu uh, low e1 prime and if this is e2 prime we can define this mu e2 prime so similar way we can define the summation of e i prime but note that by how to covering the the mess uh, defending on the method the cover covering the value is guys and these guys clearly different and if we consider another method how to covering this also the value is clearly different then among the values. So numerous value if the numerous values exist, we can take infimum value. We can take infimum value as mu a. So um, we can define mu star a is infimum if we did this among these guys. Infimum value we can take mu star a and mu star a is called outer measure induced by rho i want to say some remark of the outer measure uh, in some case we cannot find we cannot find so the, the, there is, does not exist finite open cover finite cover such that uh, this means a does not any cover any cover 
does not contain these guys. In this case, we can define mu star a is plus infinite. Uh, we can say because uh, mu star is extended real value the function. So in this case, so any we can find any cover does not satisfy any e k does not covers a. Then we can say mu star a is just uh, plus infinite. Okay. Okay. However, we yet not checked whether uh, mu star is really out measure or not. Uh, because uh, note that uh, the definition of the outer measure we should check three properties so we really if mu star, mu star is really outer measure we should uh, directly check the three properties under the definition of the outer measure however to in order to check this we need some knowledge about the infimum now let's see the definition of the infimum. Okay, uh, suppose that a a is the non-empty set, and a is the subset of the real number. On the horizontal in the horizontal line is given r is the whole set real number, and the sky line is the a. A we, we can uh, if this is alpha we can express the a is the alpha to infinite then we can say clearly alpha is the infimum of a the definition of the infimum is here first condition is that um, alpha is the lower bounded but in this clearly obviously it is not Enough insufficient definition to uh, ascertain the def the to say the infimum of a because this value and this value can be lower bounded value so this can be a infimum this is no ridiculous definition so another condition also required uh, this is here for any epsilon is given there exists x in a such that alpha plus epsilon let's see what it means here uh, alpha is this given here we plus epsilon means move the right shifting the right side okay then this value is if this value is alpha plus epsilon R, the definition is alpha plus epsilon is always larger than x note that epsilon is arbitrary value so even though we shifting uh, narrowly shifting always we can find the value x in a such that alpha plus epsilon is x when we apply this definition this point and this point we this uh, condition fails clearly fails directly check that so if these two conditions are satisfied we can say alpha is infimum a Note that um, the condition, the second condition is very important because we use the, because to check mu star is the, when we check the mu star is outer measure, we use this condition, the definition of the infimum. Okay. And another point is, another point which we notice that the properties of infimum is here. If a is subset of b, then how to uh, we, which inequalities are satisfied? The indication inequality satisfies this here. This satisfies. Uh, we can uh, easily check these properties here. For example, suppose that a is uh, a is 0, 1 uh, okay. open interval a is the 1, 0 
if we directly we draw the horizontal line, this guy is A. And suppose B is minus 1 to 1. Then uh, we can see here B is here. The, but the relation is this here. This is better. Close the interval. It's open. open. Clearly, here uh, A is subset of then we can check that uh, A is subset of B. Okay? A subset of B. Then, if we compare in P of A, this is clearly 0. And in P of B, it's clearly minus 1. When comparing two values, this is clearly um, this here. So we can check this property. Uh, this property also used to check the out, mu star is out measure. Let's check this uh, set relation. Uh, the left side, this here, the EK clearly covers the set B. Okay. This purple is the cover which this uh, this this purple set each each R each is E I which covers B. Okay. But this so and if each cover we can evaluate the function low E1 low e2 and so on we can define low ek however the summation of low ek which covers of b is still valid in the subset of the a so this can be subset of the cover which cover this it is said this can subset of this here which covers a Okay, the summation is still valid because this set relations set relations are satisfied. This equation inequalities are satisfied. Again, this summation which this summation information which covers B is still valid. Uh, which covers the cover A. So this set relations are clearly satisfied, and uh, these inequalities are satisfied. Inequality is satisfied. Okay, then let's prove the last statement: countable subadditivity. Uh, this proof is a little more compli complicated than the proof of volatility. Uh, okay, however, let's go start. Suppose the set for convenience, I define the set E is the union of E i, which i goes to 1 to infinity. And the idea, uh, each E i, our should suppose, suppose there exists E uh, I K which K goes from 0 to infinity so E I fixed K goes such that E I is covered by E I K of course this K goes to 1 from 1 to infinity of course, some some questions. Uh, if there exists no cover e i k, this in this case, then how to deal with this? Uh, later, we check this case. So, uh, so our first assumption there exists the cover e i k, but Otherwise, this is no problem, but I classify two cases, there exists this cover 
and if the case is finished, I I will explain this uh, not exist case. Okay, we can take two uh, classifying two case. There will exist uh, the sub -co the cover e i j e i k exist exist and otherwise does not exist. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, clearly, remarkable point. Clearly, I forget this here. E i j k clearly the subset of the epsilon and this point we can remark over this point we can the, under the definition of the mu star a we can define from this information we can define infimum from this information star i for convenience letting the blue purple underline uh, as star by based on star we can construct um, define mu star e i for each index i this definition clearly infimum blah 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 but the important point is that uh, the element we can notice the element is clearly uh, low low E I K. This is covers which covers uh, e, e I. And again, the let's check the definition of the infimum. I we when we record the infimum, we can write this given. For the starter, we can give the let b any epsilon be given. This is better for we can when we prove start. This means uh, when the definition of the infimum, we can write here mu star e i mu star e i uh, is smaller than mu star uh, sorry this is not the case low e i k Low e i k is smaller than mu star e i and plus epsilon. Again, this is the reason is definition of the infimum. Definition of infimum. But rather than epsilon, for the technical proof, I will give the because epsilon is arbitrary. I will give the epsilon over two. Uh, i plus 1 this index we can notice the read induction i i given this induction and the definition of interval is here record the second property is here we can apply the definition of interval this to in in order to de deduce deduct this uh, inequality Okay, then I collect all of the curve of E. Note that the E is covered, E, uh, e is a union of E i, in, and each E i covered by, each E i has covered E i k. So let's collect all of the cover. We can say F. Uh, for convenience, f i k is better. f i k is the union of i infinite and k goes to infinite e i k. This is here. And uh, union, uni, uh, the union of the countable corner, countable union of countable cover is as the countable cover. So this is the countable cover. Okay. 
So these guys, F, I, K, or this countable cover exist. We can say this cover exist. Uh, e is covered by K goes to, to infinite, I goes to infinite, F, I, K. This is clearly countable cover. Then we can expand this relation. We finally we can uh, get we will get this inequality because we can say mu e mu uh, okay mu star e e is the union of this here. This cover this is clearly there exists f i k con subset of epsilon such that e is here okay so we can clearly construct mu star e by given the this under this condition and if because they define mu star e we can consider uh, the value is this inequality is clearly by the definition of the mu star e more precisely, the definition of the infimum. This is written as i k goes to one to infinite. Step function law, law e i k. And again, note that this inequality, this inequality. Then, uh. By this inequality, for convenience, I this inequality star. Thus, because of this inequality, we we, read, we can write this is here. I goes to the infinite. This we can change this this here by the inequality. Uh, mu star e i and this here and uh, we can expand this it, it, this is here because all value is the convergence so we can expand this is first term is still mu star e i Last term is the geometric series. So by the formula, we can say this here. Because epsilon is the arbitrary value, we can finally deduct mu star e, where e is the union of ei. And this is a sigma. So we can test it. We can prove uh, the countable sub additivity condition. Someone asked me about this point, this inequality. Really, this value is the convergent to this here. This is exist uh, as a real number. Uh, note that each EI is covered by this uh, EIK. This i is every i's are satisfied. Any e1, e2, e3 for any cover, any set e1, e2, e3, e i, we can find this cover e i k which covers e i itself. But uh, this value is clearly convergence. If not, consider uh, the definition of this uh, remark. This remark. I forgot some mistake. This is the rotation is here. It does not exist such that if this uh, this case, so the the exists does not cover which covers a, then we can write this value is plus infinite. In case of this. Uh, following case, this is here, this cover does not exist such that uh, 
E, in this case, E I, E I, E I K. Such couple does not exist. Then in this case, we can define mu star E I can be uh, infinite. However, we does not suppose this case. Every uh, every e i is given their exist always their exist e i k. So in this case, extended real value system case does not happen. In this case, only does not cover e k. However, in this case, always we can find the cover. This value is the convergence. Convergence. Rather, the sec this if it does not exist the cover, this contain the second case as I proved later. Or uh, even though this cover does not exist, so and can this value is clearly infinite. Even just one I there exists the cover I such that this does this condition this conditions happen uh, again if there did not exist e of i k sorry e i k this there exists the pull some i such that this cover does not exist such that this conditions does not happen. In this case, this can be infinite. However, this does not impact the our equality because this is infinite. Because one of the mu star e i is infinite, clearly the summation is infinite. But this is clearly a uh, right in in equation. This is wrong in equation, but this indication is clearly true. Every value is smaller than infinite, and even though this value is infinite, this is no problem. So, um, case of 1, 2, even though this EIK, whether the EIK is exist or does not exist, this indication, counter subadditivity, is always satisfied. Okay, then let's change our topic. Is our second topic is mu measurable space, uh, mu me mu star measurable space. Uh, on the we can define outer measure and see on example the checking is a little different. I anyway example of the outer measure and the next theme is understanding mu measurable sets uh, the definition is here let mu be an outer measure notice set x and e is subset of x then e is said to be mu star measurable if for any x subset of x the following in equations are satisfied equations are satisfied Note that we do not have yet the sigma algebra structure, but this definition later is important role, important role because this definition uh, depends on the sigma algebra. This is looks like a filter which set is proper, which set is the sigma algebra or not. Uh, rate, later, I the secret of the mu measurable introduced the secret of the mu measurable set law as a law of the sigma algebra. Anyway, the remark. Let's see the important remark. Uh, the definition of the mu mu star measurable space is here, but we sh always the inequalities are satisfied for any subset of a is given so uh, some we should when if we encounter which uh, the set is the mu star measurable 
we just check this inequality, this, this side, because this is always satisfied uh, for any subset of x. The reason is clear. Let's see this diagram. Uh, always remember that mu star is outer measure. And so the sound of sub-additivity sub is clearly satisfied. And note that um, we can say the A. A is clearly disjoint, disjoint A union of E, A intersection of E, and this part is A E complement. Because A is uh, the pairwisely decomposed these guys, we can say A uh, mu star A is written as A again mu star A intersection of E and union A intersection of complement. Of course, countable at subadditivities is does not. Uh, in fact, whether e, each set is uh, disjoint or not. Anyway, this is just uh, this is just a set. We can decompose the two guys. We can write this is by the countable subadditivity a. E plus mu star A intersection of E complement. So this property is always satisfied for any sub any set subset of X. And let's remember my remark I previously said mu star measurable play as a role a filter as a sigma algebra. Uh, I said because we started from outer measure, uh, clearly sigma algebra does not construct not yet. But by this 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 uh, definition takes which set uh, satisfy the sigma algebra or not by satisfying the equality. What's mean? Um, Recall, let's see the recall of the sigma algebra. Sigma algebra satisfies this clearly three condition, okay? But uh, if A is an arbitrary set, so for for example, if E and complement E complement of E and this substitute this and this and this then uh, so if we substitute in these guys instead of e this this definition of the mu star measurable based on the outer measure satisfies such condition this is our um, conclusion in this lecture the mu star measurable finally uh, induced the sigma algebra. Whatever A is the arbitrary set. Arbitrary set is given, and if it substitutes this element which satisfies the sigma algebra, this equations array satisfy. Um, easy, is uh, readily and easily we check the statement for A. B, C makes some max effort to check the properties, but statement A is very easier. For example, if we substitute empty set, whatever A is the, A, the subset of X is com, um, if we substitute A, empty but note that a intersection of empty set is still empty so this is just empty set 
and we can define when we define the outer measure this value is zero the definition of the outer measure and if we substitute if we consider this point empty set complement empty set is still a complement empty set is x so intersection a, a intersection a in x is clearly a so finally the result is just a okay. this is zero zero means just the identity of this member so this anyway this equalities are satisfied should be denoted is here okay this inequalities are satisfied and because we substitute the empty set it just um, said to change this term because this here and amplement of x is empty set finally the result is mu star a ah so by the taking the first condition uh, if we just satisfied bc also satisfied this equality we can say the outer measure mu star as indeed low as a law of the sigma algebra and the property as we desired the property is clearly satisfied so the union of mu star measurable set is still mu measurable set uh, this means if we the claim if we express the claim as the mathematical expression for any arbitrary subset of x and if e1 and e2 is also a um, subset of x then we can check mu star uh, a is satisfied but we can but by the previous remark we can just check this direction it check rather than equal so this we can write written a intersection e1 union of e2 plus mu star a intersection e1 union e2 its complement and so hold its complement means sub just to change e1 this change as e1 e2 complement but in this case e1 union e2 complement of complement as we saw these examples uh, the, it's this can be clearly e1 union of e2 so just uh, change its terms so com complement properties is clearly satisfied we can just check this it, it is sufficient to check this inequality at the proof let's see to understand this example let's see this diagram note that the union of two mu star measurable set is mu measurable so if just this means e any subset of e1 e2 or both either either of them satisfies the mu measurable condition so this means mu star, mu star a is uh, equal to mu star a union intersection of one plus mu star intersection of e complement is satisfied okay then uh, on first we the remarkable point is that is here uh, given the set e inter a union of intersection uh, a a is here and e uh, complement of e1 is clearly aside from here 
Okay, so if, if we describe this area, uh, if what intersection of A1, clearly A intersection of E1 is clearly this area. Uh, A intersection of one, this area. Outside from this E1, E1. Okay. Then we can classify this point, this here, we can, this is clearly uh, A intersection, E1 is E2. And the either side is we can say A intersection, E1, and E2 complement. Okay, this part this part is uh, does not contain E2. So this line and because note that mu star satisfies countable additivity so satisfied. So we can say this is mu star A E1 plus mu star this is plus uh, a e1 intersection e2 and mu1 because this is by the Morgan properties we can say this e1 union total e2 is complement okay then let's see the proof this star. To understand this proof, I prepared the picture. Uh, note that, um, uh, first note that, the union of two, uh, each E i and E2 is the mu measurable set. This, I claim the union of two mu star measurable set is mu star measurable. So this means this both set E1, E2, I forgot this here, this clearly mu star measurable. Okay? Because this guy is too measurable, just the pick E1. E2 is okay, but I check, I pick mu, uh, I pick E1. Because E1 is mu star measurable, for arbitrary set A, we can say mu star A is mu star A union of E1, mu star A, sorry, intersection, intersection of E1 complement. Then let's remark, let's note this point. Uh, A intersection of E1 complement, this clearly uh, represents this area. Because E1 does not, E1 uh, complement and intersection of A we can say this part and this part. So we can say this and this, uh, this joint, but uh, this point is, we can say A intersection E1 complement uh, E2. This is clear. E, E1 complement A and E2. Uh, in this gray, gray part, we can say A, E1 complement E2 complement. So, if we describe this equation, but uh, okay, A 
we can say A intersection E1 one complement uh, expressed as this joint part, this guys and this guys. And because this is a musta measurable set, by countable mono countable sub additivity, countable okay, countable sub additivity, we can say this is mu a intersection of E1 plus mu a intersection of E1 intersection of E2 plus this part by the Morgan's mass law we can say this is E1 union E2 intersection ah okay and and this time let's remark this point um, again a union of e1 uh, is here we delete two point here 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 a intersection e1 is here okay this is a intersection of e1 and as I said, A intersection E1 complement E2 is here. This part. By this definition, we can check A, this is A union E1 E2. This E1, union of E1, E2 is blue guys and um, this guys and intersection of A is here. So this slash is uh, this slash is A intersection of E1. Un, in, in this, this slash area is A intersection E1 and E2 union. And this is clearly expressed A as E1 and its union A E1 as E2. This part is here. So by counter additivity condition, we can say this guy is here. Mu union A E1 union E2. And this part is mu star a is here so by this we can check these properties we can check uh, statement a and i say i only said its complement is also satisfied statement b is just unionized uh, not two union just a uh, finite union but this is also satisfies. This statement B is uh, induced by mathematical induction. So anyway, we can deduct. We finally deduct the proposition A and B. Uh, let's remark that the proposition uh, I said this mu star measurable set as a rule of the uh, sigma algebra. So this means E i is the measurable set and union of E i, but this note that this is finite. K is the measurable, still measurable set, is correspond to this. E i is, each E i is mu measurable set then union finite union of e i is also mu star measurable set mu star measurable set and because it's complemental satisfied uh, if i from this this here union uh, this yeah intersection complement it's complement this expressed by the morgan's law this here. This is still a measurable set. 
In this case, because its complement state satisfied, union of finite intersection of E i is still mu star measurable set. But note that uh, this looks like well defined as a uh, well uh, operated looks like the sigma algebra when observing the mu mu star measurable set. But it is the now yet it is not sufficient because uh, we these properties are satisfied in finite union in case of a finite union. But we remember, remark that the sigma algebra is satisfied and countable union. So this is not in, this is not sufficient to completely use the measurable as a rule as of the sigma algebra. This is our result we desire. Countable union of mu measurable is also mu star measurable is also mu star measurable, and clearly its complement is also satisfied. So if we prove in case of the countable union, we can completely mu star measurable set replay mu star measurable set play as a rule of the sigma algebra. So if we believe this here, we can finally. Uh, deduct this uh, we can induce this result. Collection of the mu star measurable indeed cons indeed uh, sigma algebra because we satisfy uh, the condition which is this guy satisfies the condition which satisfies the sigma algebra. So finally we our final proof is to check this here, countable union of mu star measurable is mu star measurable. But to check this proposition, I'll introduce some lemma which to help to prove this proposition. For any subset A in X and for any finite disjoint family, this remark that this is disjoint family of measurable set, this is type of mu star measurable set, we, because we do not construct a measurable space. So, Mr. Measurable Sets, we can uh, prove these this equations are satisfied. This proof can be easily checked by the mathematical induction. I omit the proof and I directly prove this proposition by using this lemma. Okay, then let's see the proof, the proposition. Uh, for convenience, let E expressed be unionized of countable union. E expressed as countable union. But note that E i, each E i are disjoint. Disjoint. Uh, why this uh, assumption is valid? Of course, we can consider the unionized which not each or not each member are not disjoint. However, in the previous lecture, I construct how to make the disjoint set. Even though each member is or not disjoint, for example, in the previous lecture, this 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 clearly not not uh, disjoint. This guy, this guy, this guy are not disjoint. We can define this here and this here, this here, clearly disjoint set. And if the, this white, purple, and gray unionize, it's the same set we desire, we define. So even though not disjoint, we can check, we, we can change, define the disjoint set. And if this unionized these guys, clearly E. So this is no problem. We assume each E I are disjoint. And assume that the subset of Fn. What is the Fn? Fn is the union, finite union from I to N E I. Clearly, Fn is subset of E. And okay, our claim is clear. Our claim is for any 
subset of x mu star a is here mu star a union e plus mu star a sorry intersection intersection of e uh, complement of course e is the counter union is here and we, let's start mu star a uh, because each e, by assumption each e i is the mu star measurable and by the previous theorism finite union we know finite union is clearly mu star measurable so these properties are clearly satisfied a intersection f n plus mu star intersection a intersection f n uh, it's complement okay then note that because f n is subset of e by the complement relation f n of oh, e complement of e and complement of f and c this relations clearly satisfy for by the countable sub additivity monotonicity just in this case monotonicity we can replace we can uh, get this inequality plus a intersection in the f instead e complement uh, e complement instead instead of complement of fn okay good go ahead uh, i found find the mistake this is just mu star a intersection of fn and it can say mu fn is the definition is here a intersection i one two e i plus a intersection e complement and note that when considering this here each e i are disjoint okay we can define our assumption is e i are disjoint then now use the remma i introduced here because e i are disjoint we can say this equalities are satisfied mu star so sigma first is sigma and because it's finite clearly finite and mu star a in intersection of e i and this here okay uh, then this satisfies regardless of the uh, for any natural number so because for for any n these equations are satisfied again we can say mu star a is by this because by this inequality mu k is k1 to infinite because for any element natural numbers are satisfied a intersection e i and mu star a intersection of its complement okay then note that these guys are written as the inequation uh, mu star union a union a e i This is here. This this parenthesis is here. Of course, i to infinite. Why this inequality is satisfied? Because uh, this is by the countable sub additivity. 
In this case, EI is the A intersection of EI. So by this, by this count of subadditivity, this inequalities are satisfied. Indeed, this, in this uh, union, we can expand this union because this unionized is only depends on EI. We can say this is A uh, intersection I goes to, to into infinite to EI. It's okay. Uh, we can use the notation to K. This is K. It's better. But I uh, use the I. I is better because we use the notation. But it, it is okay to is change this notation in I. Okay. Then this is I. This is I. And this part is E complement, but E is here. So this is I intersection union of E, I, its complement. So this is just say because these guys are E and these inequalities are satisfied for or any subset of X, we can check the countable sub, uh, we can check this uh, inequality. So we can check a uh, countable union of mu star measurable set is also mu star measurable. Okay, from this proposition, we are ready to, uh, of course, this uh, complement property is clearly satisfied. And we can say all correction of the mu star measurable. So the protagonist mu star measurable is here. These guys. So we could express the set M is the E of the set X, which is satisfied a uh, mu star A satisfied mu star A intersection of E mu star A its complement for R A in X. For arbitrary set X, it, if this property is satisfied, then these guys clearly satisfied a sigma algebra property. As I said, empty set and whole set is clearly dissatisfied and countable union and its complement is all satisfied. Ah, so we can say uh, this calligraphy M Correction of M, correction of the new star measurable set is the sigma algebra. So this is our uh, result. So given the arbitrary set X is given, we can define outer measure. And under the based on the outer measure, we can define the mu star measurable set. We can extract the sigma algebra for arbitrary set X. This is our uh, aim in this lecture. Okay.